this is the sixth section of the sequences and series chapter and this we're looking at the sigma notation now you've come across the sigma notation before so you know that it's the greek letter sigma and we use it to represent the sum of something yeah so you know you've seen the sum of fx over the sum of f before for working out uh, the mean um, well we can use um, the sigma notation to uh, actually represent a series so what's new that you haven't had before is that we will have something like this and um, I'll, I'll explain what this means so it basically means the sum of so that's what the, the sigma is so that hasn't changed sum of now I'm going to put over here some algebra so I'm going to have something like a 2r minus 3 okay now you can see r here um, I suppose it's a little bit like n and you can see r here now basically what this notation means is that we're going to substitute in 1 here work out what it is and then add to it the same expression here but with 2 substituted in then 3 substituted in and 4 all the way up to 18 so if I was to write this out in full it would look like this it's 2 times 1 minus 3 because of this that's where we start so that's where we start down there so maybe it might be worth writing this is your starting uh, substitution and this is the finishing substitution so this is uh, the last number that you're going to substitute in uh, so yes yeah, so let's carry this on plus 2 times and then we substitute in 2 r is 2 minus 3 and then 2 times 3 minus 3 and in fact you're going to go all the way up to let's finish it off down here so you'll have 2 times 18 minus 3 so it's going to be the sum of all of those terms now if we actually work out what these numbers are we can decide whether it's an arithmetic uh, series or whether it's a geometric series and then use the appropriate rule to find the sum so if I was to actually write out what I've got here as numbers so I've got uh, 2 times 1 minus 3 so that's negative 1 plus um, that's going to be 1 plus 3 I think that's right plus so on all the way up to 36 33 so here I can see the first term uh, here I can see the last term I know how many terms there are 18 and I can probably work out the difference between each term it looks like it's going up in twos so now it's an arith arithmetic series and I can use the appropriate uh, rule to find the uh, the sum um, of it now what you'll tend to find in general if you find that you've got the sum of and it can be r it can be k it can be n so let's put n equals let's say i don't know up to 50 and i've got something of the form um, a n plus b what you'll tend to find is that this will be an arithmetic sequence that, that produces so you'll be finding the sum of, of an arithmetic series yeah where your letter appears here if however we have something like this again using n if I have something like um, a to the power n plus b something like that you'll probably find in general that this is a geometric series yeah so see how the letter that we substitute either here's a multiple here's a power so that gives you some idea now what I would normally do is I'd write out maybe the first two or three terms decide whether it's arithmetic or geometric and then use that to help me decide uh, which uh, formulae I'm going to use to find the sum of them.
So here already it looks like it's going to be arithmetic, but I'm going to write out the first uh, few terms. So basically they're going to be 20 terms that I'm going to be adding together, starting from the first term where I substitute one in, and then the last term when I substitute 20 in. So already I can write down that n equals 20. So the other things I'm going to need is a, the first term. Now I need to decide whether it's arithmetic or geometric before I actually decide well whether it's going to be d I write down or r. But actually looking at it, I get the feeling that this is going to be arithmetic. But let's check, let's just double check. So the first term, which we'd write as u1, so that's going to be 4 times 1 plus 1, so the first term is 5. u2 would be 4 times 2 plus 1, so that's going to be 9. u3, so already I can, I can see, sorry, 4 times 3 plus 1, uh, which is going to be 13. Right, so my first term is 5, and I can see that I'm adding to find the next term, and we're adding 4. So D is 4. So I know it's an arithmetic series and I want to find the sum of the arithmetic series, which means I need to use uh, this. So N over 2, uh, 2A plus N minus 1D. So I'm finding the sum of 20 terms. N is 20, 20 over 2. A is 5, so 2 times 5, plus n minus 1, so n is 20, so 20 minus 1, times by the common difference, 4. So all I need to do is to work that out, and I get my answer. So, uh, some of this I can do in my head, I think. So 20 divided by 2 is 10, times by 2 times 5, which is going to be 10. And then I'm adding to that 19 times 4 and I get 860. So different notation, but once we know what that notation actually represents, we can use something we've used before. So the sum of those 20 terms is 820, uh, sorry, 860. Looking at these two, I can see that the letter that I'm substituting is the power. So I've got an inkling that these are going to be um, geometric series, but to check, I am going to work out the first few terms. So u1, the first three, normally the first three is enough. It's going to be five times three to the power of one minus one. So that's three to the power zero, which is five times one, which is five. u2 is going to be five times three to the power uh, two minus one. So that's five times uh, three, basically a three to the power one, which is 15. U3 is going to be 5 times 3 to the power 3 minus 1, which is 3 squared. So 4 times, um, so 5 times 9, which is going to be 45. Now that should be enough for me to see exactly what's going on. So straight away, first term is A, uh, which is 5. The number of terms is 12. And if I have a look to see what we're doing, it's not adding because I'm not adding 10, I can see that I'm multiplying by 3. So here I have r equals 3. So if I want to find the sum of these 12 terms, that's going to equal a r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. All we need to do is substitute numbers in, so that's 5 times uh, 3 to the power 12 minus 1 over uh, 3 minus 1. We'll work that out on our calculators and see what we get. So I'm just going to type that in. So 5 bracket 3 to the power 12 minus 1 down to the bottom, 3 minus 1, which is 2. And I get that looks like a hundred and oh, one million three hundred and twenty eight thousand six hundred for that so I'll just write that down one three two eight 
one, three, two, eight. Sorry, that doesn't look like a one. One, three, two, eight, six hundred. Okay, so that's our answer for the first bit. Now for part B, again, we're going to do the same thing. Let's work out the first few terms and see what we've got. Now, you'll notice actually that the, the rule is the same. Five times three to the power K minus one. It's the same rule. What is different is this. This is not going from the first term to the 12th term. This is going from the fifth term to the 12th term. Now we could pretend that uh, u5 is the first term and u6 is the second term and do it that way. There's another way we can do it. There are rules to do with sums. And if you think about it, if I want to find the sum from the sum from the fifth to the twelfth, which is what I want to do. I could do the sum from the first to the twelfth, which I did in part A, uh, and then subtract the sum from the first to the fifth to the not to the fifth but to the fourth yeah so let's try and do it in a, a diagram let's say this bar represents the sum of the first number to the twelfth number and this bar here represents the sum from the first number to the fourth number well then what's left well what's left over here this is going to be the sum from the fifth number to the twelfth number. So this is the approach that we take, that we'll find the sum from the first term up to a certain numbered term, and then we can subtract that off. So the first thing we'd write down is this, that the sum from the fifth term to the twelfth term is equal to the sum from the first term to the twelfth term minus the sum from the first term to the fourth term. So be careful, it's not to the fifth term. We want the fifth term. We want to take away the first four so that we've got what's left. Now, we've already worked out half of this. So we've already worked out the sum uh, from the uh, first term to the 12th term. We did that here. Yeah, so now we just want to work out the sum from the first term to the fourth term. Now, that's pretty much what we did in part a the only difference being that the first term is still five uh, the common ratio is still three but n now is not 12 n is just four so we plug that into the the formula to find the sum of these four terms so that's going to be the first term a whoops it's first term five times by um, r to the power n, which now is 4, minus 1, over r minus 1, so 3 minus 1. So let's see what we get for that. Hopefully there's enough space to write it down. So um, 5 bracket 3 to the power 4 minus 1 over 3 minus 1, which is 2. Oh, that's nice. It's just 200, so I've got plenty of space. So um, the sum from the fifth term to the twelfth term is this one, three, two, eight, six hundred, which is the sum of the first to the twelfth. Take away two hundred, which is the sum from the first to the fourth. So we take this approach. So I can probably do that in my head, I think. One, three, two, eight, four hundred is my final answer so let's just highlight that there right you should now be able to do exercise 3f which is on pages 77 to 78 of the textbook